In this tutorial you are going to learn how I created this abstract glassy skull in Cinema 4D and Octane. To follow this tutorial you need Cinema 4D, Octane and Photoshop. Let's get started. First we need to import our skull. I provided a link in the description of this video where you can download the exact skull I'm showing right here. So let's import it. In this import window we need to change the scale from 1 to 150 centimeters because this seems pretty small if you don't change the scaling. Let's delete that. Let's delete the skulls we don't need and let's work with that. Let's try and get the skull into the profile shot we want. Let's go over here to the enable axis tool and position the arrows where we can pretty much center them inside of this skull. You can check from the top if it's centered. And yeah. Let's disable that. Now we can rotate the skull to the position we need. That looks pretty good. Let's re-enable this axis and now let's reset the rotation down here to 0, 0, 0 and apply. Now we've successfully reset our rotation and re-disable the axis manipulation and yeah now you can tilt this like that and control the skull a little better in general. Next we need our material we will use to create the glass effect on the skull. So let's import it. I imported my selection of the most materials I use on a daily basis in uh, Octane. We are going to use the diamond material. To learn how to create this exact material, you can check out this video and you can come back when you are done with creating this material. So as you can see, I already applied this. We can, uh, let's apply it right here and drag this out and we can delete that. Now we just have the skull object and looks pretty good already. But we want some more colorful reflections in here. So let's move over to Photoshop and create some colors for this. Now that we're loaded into Photoshop, we can create a new document. Let's do 3000 by 3000 pixels. That should be fine. And now we can get started with the colors. First, I click this little lock right here to unlock this layer, um, but we can uh, pretty much ignore this. Let's just hide that. And let's get the brush tool, press B on your keyboard. And now that we have the brush tool, we can size it down um, Yeah, to about that. I think I'm gonna set the background color to a black. Let's do that real quick. Get back to the brush and set our color right here. I think we can start with a pink. Yeah. And now I'm just gonna play around with the colors and see what I can find, see what I like, and then I'll come back. This is what I came up with. Let's go over to filter. Let's go over to blur and add a Gaussian blur. Yeah, maybe around yeah, 50, 50 pixels. Yeah, around 50 pixels should be fine just to get it smoother and blend in the colors better. Now let's liquefy this. We will go over here to filter and liquefy. And yeah, let's size that down to yeah, around 700 or let's 
maybe yeah 800 is pretty nice density to 50 pressure we can take that up to 50 as well and let's use the forward warp tool and we're just gonna warp this a little I like this already, but let's mix it in together a little more and use the twirl clockwise tool. Size that down, but let's take that up to, yeah, 1400 seems pretty nice. And just go over some parts and mix everything. Then go back to the forward warp tool and kind of fix these empty areas that the what was it called again? The twirl clockwise tool created. We can also reconstruct this. Uh, let's turn down the amount and look at what happens. I think we're gonna take it to 85%. That looks a little better. And I'm gonna use a big sized warp tool now and just start contouring those edges until I'm happy with what I got. Let's reconstruct this again. Yeah, I think we're gonna take it to 95 this time. And I'm pretty happy with that. Let's click OK. And now let's warp it a little more. Press Ctrl T to activate the transform tool. And let's transform this to fill out our black background we got over here. And we can also fine tune those colors. Press Ctrl U to open up the U and saturation menu. Um, I think we're gonna change this green right here. Let's go over to greens and see what happens. Okay, nothing happens. Maybe if we go over to science. Yeah, science changes this. Yeah, let's take the U to plus eight on the science and click okay. And now we're gonna make those colors pop more. Let's go to image, adjustments and vibrance and turn up the vibrance. 60 looks pretty fine to me. Let's take that and maybe let's add some curves. Oh, the curves are too intense for my taste sometimes, but if you stay at those higher areas right here, you can achieve a pretty cool effect with those colors. Pretty much you need to form an uh, S letter to achieve more color depth. Let's turn this down to intense. Yeah, around here. I think I'm gonna take this shape right here. Let's click OK. And now we can save this and let's go back to Cinema 4D. Let's import the beautiful texture we just created in Photoshop. Uh, let's go over to Object and let's place an HDRI environment. Click on those three dots right here to select an image. Uh, these are older liquefied textures I made, but I'm gonna import the one I just created. Let's go over to the settings in Octane and deactivate um, Keep Environment and activate the Alpha Channel. And now you can see we already got something pretty cool over here. Let's increase the power to, yeah, let's say 1.5. And let's play around with the glossy depth. Three looks good to me. I think I'm gonna work with that. And let's play around with the rotation axis until we're happy with what we've got.
So here you can see the rotation settings I used. And now I'm going to play around with the diamond glass material and see what I can change with that. Changing the index to around 5.38 makes it look pretty amazing. This kind of looks like a floating brain cloud mixture, I guess. <laughs> I don't know really, but I like it a lot. Um, yeah, let's um, add some glare and bloom. Let's take the bloom up right here. Yeah, 32 looks just fine. Um, I don't think I want glare on that too much. Or maybe let's, yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, glare looks pretty good. Let's take five. Let's set the glare to five. And now let's see how we can improve this image with the response settings on the camera imager. I set it to ECFA color HDC 400 plus CD. I don't know how that word is pronounced correctly, but <laughs> this is what I took. Now let's export it and go back into Photoshop and add the melting effect. Now that we're back in Photoshop, we can finish up the last touch up of this render and then add the melting effect. So let's first go to filter and go over to camera raw filter. And let's just play around with those sliders right here until we can make those colors even more vibrant. These are my final settings, you can copy them if you'd like to, but I think it's way better if you just play around with those sliders and look at the image and yeah, just decide on maybe how bright it should be or maybe you need to take the slider down to make it a little darker. This part is pretty much just trial and error. Let's click OK. And now let's copy this by pressing Ctrl J. Um, let's convert this into a smart object and add the melting effect with the liquify filter. Let's change the brush size. I think I'm gonna try around, yeah, 650 should be fine. And let's start melting this skull. And what I also like to do is change the brush size while I'm working on it and just see what happens. And if I like it, yeah, I can keep it. And if I don't like it, you can just press Ctrl Z or Ctrl Alt Z to undo more than one change and work on from that. Let's turn it down and try to add some smaller details over here. And again, we can use the reconstruct to look at what we've done and fine tune it. Let's take 70 and drag this down more over here. And that is our finished melting skull. Let's press OK. This is pretty much the end result. I think I'm gonna fine tune this area over here and show you the final result in the end. This is the final result. Now we can export this and post it to Instagram or wherever you want to post it. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm at Justin's Posters. 
go follow me there. I'm posting art every week and please tag me if you use this tutorial to create something. I want to see it. Goodbye and have a nice day. <laughs>